In a previous video, we showed how to manage users in Office 365 Azure Active Directory. Now let's take a look at managing groups. And just like users, groups shows up here. It's pinned to the top of our little menu. So I'm going to select on groups. And again, I've got active groups, deleted groups. And now this one's a little odd. Shared mailboxes isn't actually a group. It's a shared mailbox. Now it's kind of thrown in here in groups just at a convenience sake. It's actually an exchange Office 365 setting that allows multiple people to have access to the same mailbox. Hence the name shared mailboxes. And that actually doesn't have anything to do with groups. Microsoft decided to throw it here because they thought we wanted quick access to it. So it was kind of nice of them. So let's go to our active groups and this is going to show us all of our active groups. And we got a couple of, or we've got one that I created with IVC Bassett earlier, and then the all company group. And this will show us our sync status, team status, membership, the group email. Okay. Very, very similar here to working with, um, working with users. We can add a group, we can export groups, we can filter, and then we can manage groups by clicking on them. So let's add a group real quick. And I'm going to add a group, and I'm going to choose a group type. Now this can be a Microsoft 365 group, creates an email group to collaborate, you can add Microsoft Teams groups, I can create a distribution group, which is an email address to send to a whole bunch of people, a mail-enabled security group, where I can control access to OneDrive and SharePoint, uh, or a security group that does the same thing but does not have a ma an email address. So lots of different options for me. I just need to think about what kind of group do I want to create. For this, uh, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to go and do a Microsoft 365 group. Creates a group email to collaborate. So I'll click Next. I'm going to specify a name for the group and I'm going to call this sales and then a description. Microsoft 365 group for sales personnel. All right, and next. Okay, now owners. Owners have unique permissions. And I have no owners at the moment. I need to assign a group owner. And you'll see right here, group owners can add or remove members, delete conversations from the shared inbox, change group settings. They can rename the group, update the description, and great. We have to have at least one group owner. So I'm going to assign an owner, and I'm going to go ahead and make George my owner here. So I'm going to select George, and I can do more than one. So I can disperse the uh, administrative burden of maintaining the groups across multiple people if I want to. But in this case, I'm just going to add one. I'm going to add George as my group owner, and click Next. Uh, what about members? I can add different members to my group now. So I'm going to click and I'm going to go ahead and make George a member of the group. So he's not just going to own it, he's going to be a member of it. Now, there's going to be a code. Let me back up and try this again. You might not want to have the owner be a member. So there may be situations where you don't. The owner may be an administrator who doesn't need to be involved in all the conversations, but you want an administrator managing it rather than having somebody in the group managing it. And that's kind of an organizational decision, right? So there's no real right or wrong there. But in this case, George is going to be our first member, and he's also going to be our group owner. So I'm going to hit OK. And now George Smith is added as a member. So I'm going to click Next. I can set a group email address. I'm going to make it Sales. So it's Sales at, and then here's my domain. And then I can make this a public group or a private group. I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Um, and then I can add Microsoft Teams to this group if, and here's the notation, all owners must have a license that include Teams. Well, in this case, I don't, so that's not a big deal. And, of course, we can change things later on. So, next. And here's my group. The group name, basics, owners, members, settings. And we are going to click Create Group. And that will go through and create the group for us. Now the group has been created. These are the things that we can do with it. Okay, we're going to close. 
And at this point, we have a group named Sales. Now, if I want to manage the group, I'm going to click on the group. And here's where I can make changes to it. So I've got one owner, one member. Here's my general information, my description, my aliases. I can add more aliases if I want. Here are my members. I can view and manage owners, view and manage members. Here are my group settings. Allow external senders to email this group, yes or no. Send copies of group conversation events to group members. Hide from your organization's global address list. And then the privacy. And then if it's a Teams enabled group, I can come here and set up a team with this group as well. Okay, so pretty straightforward to manage the group. All right. So now we've looked at creating groups and we've taken or in, in our previous video we looked at creating users. So now that we can create users and groups, we can go ahead and populate our Active Directory with any of the information that we need. So all of the users, all of the groups, all of the configuration that we need for that. All right, and here right on our little three dots gives us more information. Edit the name and description, edit the email address, and delete the group. Okay, so we've done all of this inside Office 365. If I click my show all here, this Office 365, now it's using Azure Active Directory, but it's not taking me out to the full Azure Active Directory site. If I want to do that, so this gives me basically the shortcuts to all the information that I will typically use from Azure Active Directory, but occasionally there are things that I'm going to need access to in Azure Active Directory that haven't been exposed here in my, the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So in my Admin Center down here, I can come down to Azure Active Directory. And this... Get through all of their security questions is going to take me to Azure Active Directory. And this is the full Azure Active Directory portal. So here I'm going to click on Users. And you'll see that my users are the same. It's because I'm actually using the same Azure Active Directory system. I'm just accessing it from a different portal. One of the things I like about this, it opens up in a new tab for me so I can easily get back to my Office 365 Admin Center. Most of what I'm going to do managing Office 365, I can do from here. But occasionally, if I need a little more Active Directory, the, a little more Active Directory settings and what's been exposed over here, then I can come to Admin Center's Azure Active Directory and get to the rest of it. Okay, there we go. That's how we can create and manage our groups in the Microsoft Office 365 Admin Center.